So, Dr. Quinn, what are some of the increased risk that um, educators have to deal with in schools? I mean, Jade, it's like I had a patient earlier this week and she was so upset. She brought her first grader in because she, she told me that he went to school one morning with a Superman face mask on and he came home that evening with a Spider-Man face mask on. And she was so worried. She was like, oh my goodness, I want you to do a coronavirus test right now. The, the problem is the research is showing that children are much less compliant with these healthcare recommendations, such as wearing your face mask, maybe not switching your Superman face mask for a Spider-Man. <laughs> so the, the, the children are not as compliant as adults because they don't understand. They, they, they're less likely to social distance and are coming from multiple households. And our educators, our uh, people in the schools, they're exposed to children for prolonged periods of time and they're not getting the vaccinations because it's not yet approved for children under 16. That's why it's so vital that our educators and their support, such as the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers, are, are allowed to get these vaccines. And now it's been determined that they are now prioritized where they can now get the vaccinations. And this is really important. So do many children serve as carriers? And what does that exactly mean for the educators and the staff? Oh, it, it's very, very important to take note that children, because they're healthier, they're less likely to have symptoms. I mean, there are various reports showing different numbers, such as one third or, or greater of children that get infected have no symptoms. So they're around the educators and the support staff, but they don't know. So th some of these educators may be elderly or have chronic medical conditions and be vulnerable, meaning their immune system is not as strong. So if they get coronavirus, they can't fight it off as well and they can lose their lives. So this, these are factors that were considered that led to teachers being prioritized to get these vaccinations. So we always want to know how people are doing once they get the, the vaccine. What have your patients told you about their experience, maybe if they're teachers and how are they dealing with this if they have to go out and teach during this pandemic? They are very excited and very, very, very thankful because the bottom line is they want to get these vaccines. They're getting them. And also note, a lot of the reports are showing a disparity between low-income households and high-income households that have the support to, uh, so, to take care of the virtual learning. So it's so important we get these vaccines, get our teachers back in the classrooms, and get back on track. All right, Dr. Quinn, thank you so much for, for talking with us. We always have plenty of COVID-19 questions to ask you about. So thank you once again, and we'll see you real soon. Thank you.